Uh, so I'm gonna start with a question for all of you today. So what do you think the average price of a new car is today? In the US, there's probably a lot of engineers in here so you need specificity. So in the US, anybody? 45? You're, you're super close. It's actually $47,000, which kind of blew me away. But then I thought it could be much, much worse. Um, what if each car was designed by a different designer? Each and every one. They, you know, custom designed each part. A new group of contractors came together to assemble each one. Uh, customers made changes throughout the entire design and the construction or the assembly um, process. What if all of that work was done outdoors? I'm laying it on pretty thick. Hopefully you're seeing the parallel here, but how much then would it cost? I'm gonna say maybe three, three and a half million dollars. It would be highly uncertain, right? The cost would be uncertain, the schedule would be uncertain, all of that. Um, but we do have the answer. We know what it is. It's technology, right? We're gonna fly some drones over these guys and we'll capture their progress a bit better. We'll implement a new cost control system, and that is gonna better communicate those changes that are happening throughout the process. Uh, we'll bring some robotics out here, and we'll install um, the wheels on the car. That'll solve it, right? That'll transform this process. We kind of inherently and intuitively know that that won't transform this process, and yet that's often what we do in construction, isn't it? So the issues in construction are many. You know them, I don't have to repeat them all for you. We have issues with waste, we're highly damaging to the environment, lack of labor, mass customization, on and on and on, right? And they form what feels like a massive traffic jam to progress. We can't fix those problems, those major issues in construction by tacking on tech any more than we can fix this traffic jam by simply plucking out individual cars and replacing them with, with faster cars, right? Digital transformation is, it's hard. Transformation is hard. It requires us really to think big, to think about what creates real value for our customers, to take on the big challenges in the construction industry, uh, it requires us to rethink our processes, and this is not surface level rethinking. This is really re deconstructing and really thinking of why we do everything that we do. Thinking across the life cycle, thinking about roles and responsibilities within that and how that gets reshuffled, and then thinking about how we apply technology to supercharge those processes. And it of course requires us to enable people. Uh, it's last on the list, but it is certainly not least. So I'm gonna give you a few examples um, from Barton Mallow that kind of embody these principles. And I'm gonna focus by kind of um, really focusing on enable people. Because at the end of the day, we can have the best ideas, the best processes, the best technology, but if people aren't on board, they don't come along on the journey, if they're not trained and, and capable of delivering in a new way, then it's kind of all meaningless. Does this picture get any of you excited? It's fun, right? We build really complex projects. Um, you know, hundreds of drawings, thick spec books, dozens of contracts, hundreds, sometimes thousands of people all need to be orchestrated perfectly to deliver a project safely, on time, on budget, um, with high quality. And as builders, we think, bring it on. This is, this is exciting, let's do this thing. But we took a step back and thought, what, what do our customers think of this process? What do they think when they look at this site or contemplate their new project? What do they think when they get a set of drawings and are asked, you know, are you good with the design as it is? You know, are you good with this change? How many people in the world really know how to read construction drawings? What do they think when they get um, an estimate? You know, this is the cover page and there's dozens of pages behind. We might have formatted it really beautifully, but do they really understand what they're looking at? This schedule is probably 50 pages long. It's a thing of beauty. Every single thought, you know, every single activity has been planned perfectly, right? It is a detailed plan of how we're gonna execute this project. But could a customer take this and really understand whether we're on schedule or not? Could they take this and, under, and um, communicate it to others on their team of where we stand or you know, what, when they're gonna be disrupted in certain parts of their project? It's no wonder that they often look like this, or they're at least feeling like this on the inside, right? Um, <clears throat> and this confusion that they have 
it often leads to major problems that we experience in late um, decision making, right? Because they're not confident in their decision making, so maybe they make a late decision that impacts our schedule. It leads to changes downstream in design. We just can't understand why would you make this change now? We've been communicating to you the whole time what this was going to look like and how this was going to work, but they just didn't understand it. The way to resolve this is not revolutionary. So I'm gonna kind of share a few examples, but what I want you to focus on is not the things that we can do, but are we really doing them across our organization at all times? Because ultimately we want to get to you know, them looking like this. So when they say a picture is worth a thousand words, they mean a 3D picture. They do not mean a 2D drawing, right? And better yet, if you give the customer something easy where they can navigate through this, they get a much more solid understanding of, of what you're planning to provide to them. And it doesn't have to be beautiful to be effective. Um, sometimes the ability to visualize different options and the cost associated is enough. Instead of telling them when they're gonna lose their tennis courts, when their roads will be disrupted, when the work is going to happen, you can show them and they can play it back again and again and again. They can play it for other people. Instead of wondering whether you're on schedule, they'll know, right? And they'll understand. Ultimately, getting them to this place, which is, which is good for us. Um, so the key in this example is not knowing. 3D, 4D, 5D, none of these concepts are new, right? We've, we've known about these for some time. The key is that we have to have a workforce that is capable of delivering that way, delivering that value to our customers on all of our projects. We need to set expectations. We need to bring them along on the journey. They need to understand why they're doing it. They need training, they need support in order to be able to deliver in that new way. Now I'm gonna switch for my second example. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna talk about design, which is kind of weird because we don't do any design. We don't do any engineering or, uh, or architectural work. Uh, but as I'm sure many of you know, so many of the challenges that we experience in construction um, have their solutions, have you know, the opportunities uh, upstream in design. So Bart Mallow is currently building several um, manufacturing facilities like this one. Um, they are complex manufacturing facilities uh, that need to be completed at warp speed for our customers. We couldn't just look at the construction process to try to figure out how on earth we're going to deliver at that warp speed. We had to look all the way upstream at design and think about all of the processes together and all of the roles and all of the responsibilities so that we can ultimately deliver, and we are delivering, these are nearly three million square feet, and we're delivering them in less time than kind of your local mini mansion. Okay, design, Just this, this is the setup, right? Um, we often get a model that looks like this. The engineer has communicated to us design intent. You guys recognize that? We receive it. We give it to our contractors, we give it to our self-perform teams who essentially throw it away and they create this. And the key here is not the different colors. Uh, what they do is that they redraw this so that it can actually be fabricated and installed. It's got the right sizing of all of the um, piping. It's got the right, uh, and equipment. It's got the right bends, the right elevations. It's all coordinated, right? We experience this quite often. Uh, we kind of accept this as a process, but it's insane because you think somebody is doing something, we're throwing away and we're doing it again. And with great waste comes great opportunity. So we took the opportunity to really get together with our partners. We did not do this in a vacuum. I think that is a huge part of, of making change is that we get together with others and we really collaborate together to make change. And we, so our partners, um, our architect, engineer, contractors, customer, and we rethought the roles and responsibilities. How do we together get to this place where we're doing zero redrawing? We are moving as quickly through the design process as, as humanly possible. The engineers now do what they do best. They set requirements and specifications, schedules, P&IDs, things like that, right? And the, the contractor who's actually going to be um, fabricating and installing, they do um, what they do best, they draw it so that it can be fabricated and installed in the, in the best way possible. We implemented a shared platform. This is where technology really undergirded the whole, the whole thing. And that provides the transparency and accountability of the whole process. So when the contractor is drawing, 
the engineer can watch that and check it against the requirements constantly, not every once in a while we throw it over the fence and then they throw it back with you know, some suggestions. That's constantly happening, moving the process through quickly. The customer can see that we're progressing and knows where their decision points are. And we wrapped that all in a new service for us of design management. This was an opportunity for us to extend our capabilities and our services. Um, so our design managers make sure this whole thing sings. They make sure that the meetings are happening, the decisions are made, the platform is being used properly. And the great thing about it is it just extended something we're already very good at. We already managed complex construction, now we're moving upstream to manage complex design and make sure that that design enables the best possible construction schedule. And ultimately, we cut months, months out of the schedule, which provided tremendous value to our clients and now they ask for it repeatedly. Okay, best for last, I've showed you nothing that's really new, right? So you guys kind of have seen that. But now's the, now's the new part, so uh, this is my favorite. Um, so I want you to imagine something quickly. Imagine that you could bring the factory floor, assembly line type process, and all the benefits out to the job site. Imagine that you could build a high rise building with almost no work up at heights. Imagine that you could build a building upside down. I want you to meet lift build. With lift build, the structural framing for each, for the roof and all of the floors is built at the ground level. Uh, where it's a very repeatable process, all the materials are there, it's very easy to train new iron workers to do this process. The deck is placed, the concrete is poured, and then the floor is lifted up to about eight feet where the workers then can get underneath, do the fireproofing, install the MEP systems, all of that is done, again, in a very repeatable process. You're not having to lift those materials um, up, pump you know, concrete up, and then at the same time, the materials that will be needed to finish out each of the floors are loaded onto um, the floor so that we won't have to be lifting those materials up either. They have to be planned out very specifically so that um, we get a nice even lift of the floor. The facade is put on. When do we ever get to put a 20-story building's facade on at the ground level and do that repeatedly? And then each floor is lifted into place. So while the additional floors are being built at ground level, the, uh, the finishes are occurring um, in an enclosed and conditioned space up above. Pretty awesome, right? Despite, you know, well, obviously through this, we had to, that was thinking big. We had to come up with many, many new processes. Uh, it, it presented a lot of new challenges, opportunities for applying technology in unique ways to kind of amplify those processes. Um, and it, created, it creates tremendous value, safety, quality, um, it's more certainty in schedule and cost, uh, the ability to address a lot of the labor challenges that we have. Uh, but despite that value, as you know, with any new big new thing, you have to find customers. Uh, so we're finally, we're building our first one in Detroit, Michigan. It's pretty exciting. Uh, this is the exchange building. Here you can see the, uh, it's a 16 story building. This is the 13th um, floor being built. And, uh, and the lessons that we are learning and the rapidity with, with, with which we are learning is just, it's, it's fantastic. This is what the building will look like um, when it is complete. So it's, it's pretty daunting, but exhilarating to work on something like Lift Build. It obviously takes a huge investment. It requires bringing on a lot of people, but the learnings that we're getting that we can even bring back into the rest of our business are, are immense. So. Transformation is definitely hard, um, but it is essential for our businesses. You've heard that over and over and over again. Uh, so I wanna end with, uh, with some questions for you. These are questions that we are constantly asking ourselves. Are we thinking big enough? Are we really challenging kind of the status quo in our processes? Are we really thinking about what brings value to our customers, what they see, looking at things through their eyes? Are we rethinking our processes and roles, really getting deep in there? Again, questioning that status quo. Do we understand the capabilities of technology so that we can supercharge those processes? And most importantly, honestly, at the end of the day, are we actively preparing our workforce? Are we investing in them so that they can deliver in this new way? If no, 
Unfortunately, we're kind of accepting that this is the best way to, um, to build a car while the rest of the industry accepts assembly lines in complex manufacturing, right? So thank you. <laughs>